You're gonna have to say that for me. So I'm gonna need, since I am not so good with names, <laughs> and I've been having a difficult time since I'm here, kind of pronouncing names, I do not want to butcher their names, so I'm gonna allow them <laughs> to introduce themselves. We have, it's been a lot. This is Charity and Ayowale. <clears throat> there we go. So, hi everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Gian and I'm originally from Guyana, which is in South America. Um, are any of you familiar with Guyana? Have you heard about it? Yes. Okay, good, because I, I always have to explain where Guyana is and, you know, just pretty much the culture because it's a very small country, basically 700,000 people. And even though we're located in South America, the culture, the cuisine, everything is exactly like what you see in the Caribbean. So you'll find um, stews and soups and rice and peas and things like that, just like you'll find in maybe Jamaica, Bahamas, Trinidad, it's basically the same. So today I decided to bring a recipe that pretty much everywhere in the Caribbean has a version. A version. I didn't want to bring something that was Guyanese or Bahamian or, you know. So I'm bringing bacon saltfish. Even though it's called bake, it's basically a fried dough. I mean, who doesn't like fried foods? So it's going to be really good. But you just fry it, it pops up, and we typically eat it for breakfast with something savory, eggs, salt, fish, cheese, something like that. And the next dish I'm gonna bring, which I'm gonna pair with the bake, is a Caribbean style salt fish. Now ironically, at the back of the hotel, um, I went for breakfast and they had a stewed stockfish. And it was so similar to the salt fish that we make in the Caribbean. So it was so funny to come so far and to see a dish just almost exactly like our own. So I'm excited to do that. Of course, we're gonna have um, a Caribbean flair to it. One little bit of time or more like a lot of time. That's something you find in a lot of Caribbean cooking. Everything savory is gonna have a bunch of time and I'm gonna show you that later on. But I started blogging years ago, before there was even really a name or, you know, people just blog casually. And that's how I started. As um, our MC explained, there weren't recipes online. So I'm like, okay, I have to do it. That way, regardless of whether you're still in your home country or you're living overseas, you have access to the same recipes. And also finding a way to simplify it because the newer generation we're super busy. We don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen. Our mothers had more time. So they were able to put a lot more time into cooking, into just making sure everything was perfect. Now, the average person has to work, come home, and try to put a meal on the table. I, I, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I still try to cook in an hour and under, much less people who work. So that was my goal, just to simplify Caribbean food, make it accessible to everybody, and just know that it's not complicated. It could, if I can do it, because I'm not a professional, anybody can do it. So, we're gonna get started, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by making the bake. So, the first ingredient we're gonna need is all-purpose flour. So, Chef Gian, let me quickly interrupt you here. Okay. Are we getting anybody from the audience to participate? Well, we will once we start with the, with the cutting of the vegetables, or you want to bring somebody up to help us now. Fantastic. So, if you're going to participate, be ready for it. Um, we also will be taking questions. She's going to be taking questions in the middle. So, just raise your hand. If I don't see you, yell, yell my name. Just shout Tolu, and let me come and give you the microphone so you can ask your questions. Let's go ahead. Okay. So the first thing we're going to need is um, all-purpose flour. We're going to use all-purpose flour. We need some type of a leavening agent because we need it to kind of puff up as it cooks. I'm using baking powder. Some people use yeast. So it's all a preference of if you prefer a yeasted dough or baking powder dough. I prefer baking powder, so that's what I'm using. Next thing we have is a little bit of sugar. So while there's sugar in it, it's not sweet. 
You're going to have a bit of sweetness, but this is not a dessert. So when you bite into it, this is something that's served for breakfast. So we don't want something too overly sweet and, you know. So we're going to add the sugar. We need a pinch of salt, just a little bit. And the next thing we're going to do is add butter. Now, I've done this recipe, and we could use room temperature butter. I've done this recipe using both butter and margarine, and it works fine. It, it really works fine. I mean, this is definitely something that's geared towards the home cook. You're going to find these ingredients in just about everybody's kitchen. It's, you don't need specialized tools, you know, because not everybody has um, biscuit cutters or a stand-up mixer or things like that. And even though I tend to use it sometimes, I still try to keep my recipe more accessible to the average person. So you can make it with a knife, a spoon, and a pot. So, and this, you just mix the, rub the bacon into the flour just until all of the lumps disappear. You just want it to look like this. See, you can't see any real lumps of butter. Are you just rubbing it with your fingers? It's just very simple. And this bake that I'm making, this is some, you'll find it more in Guyana and Trinidad. If you, but if you go over to, let's say, Jamaica. Jamaica has what's called fried dumpling. Their one is a little bit more dense. You go over to somewhere like St. Lucia. They have Johnny Cakes. It's a little bit more like, almost like a pancake. So when you go throughout the Caribbean, you'll definitely find you might hear bake, bake, fried dumpling, Johnny cake. It's basically all the same thing. And of course, everybody has their little spin on it, you know? So, Chef Jian, you didn't give us the, I'm right here. I didn't want to block anybody. You didn't give us the measurements um, of, of the flour, the baking powder, and the butter that you're using. Because I know some people are taking serious notes right oh, now. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so yes. this is three cups of all-purpose flour. It's one tablespoon of baking powder. It's about a quarter cup of sugar. I kind of go between a quarter cup and a third cup, depending on how sweet I want it. And um, also, the sugar also helps to brown this as it fries. So if you add a little too, little, if you like less sugar, don't be surprised if it doesn't fry up really golden brown, because that does affect how it cooks up. So, and um, it's just a pinch of salt. And yes, I'm using a pinch instead of an actual measurement. So let's say maybe about an a eighth of a, table, a teaspoon of salt. And um, the butter, the butter is half, uh, three tablespoons of butter. And this recipe, both of these recipes are available on my blog, giancancoke.com. And I also have a video on YouTube. So you can see a live tutorial, just, you know, just in case you run into some issues along the way. So the next thing we're going to do is make a well in the middle, and we're going to add the water. I need a cup of water. A cup. So we need about a cup of water. Now, I'm using water today, but you can also use coconut milk in this. I mean, oh, coconut milk, to me, just makes everything better. And just adding that little extra element, it's like it just transforms it. You know, maybe on a special occasion, you can just add coconut milk, and it does affect the texture slightly, but it is, you know, the final product is really, really good. Is that a cup? So, yeah. all right, so we're gonna add a little bit. Don't pour all in. Yeah. So generally when you're cooking, it's better for you to err on the side of adding less than more, because if you add too much, you can't take it out. You can't. You can always add a little bit more water as needed, but you can't take it out. I can add more flour, but that might affect the ratio of flour to leavening. So that's not something you want to do. You want to add just a little bit, get in there with your hands, and mix it up. And, um, pardon, you would need, not all, you would need room temperature water. Not hot, not cold, just basically room temperature water. And we're going to just basically pour it in. And what we're looking for is for it to start to form a, 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 a dough. Basically, it has to come together. And it's going to be slightly sticky. 
very, very slightly sticky, but it shouldn't be too sticky that you're not able to handle it. But what you don't want is a firm, dry dough. What I found with cooking, you can always kind of tell what your end result is gonna be. If your dough is very, very firm, more than likely you have a dense, hard product. So always check the dough depending on what you're looking for to make sure it has the right consistency. Please be getting your questions ready for Chef Gian. Please also, um, I think you were given these small, um, these small receipts. Fill them out on your way out of here. Drop them. You'll be getting an e-certificate for participation in this master class. So it really is important. Fill them out and drop them one. on the way out. Be getting your questions ready. Also use the hashtag GT Bank Food Drink and let's get cooking. Is this something like, I think we were discussing earlier that it's similar to our own Puff Puff. Um, but Puff Puff tends to be a little bit more, may I? Go ahead. A little bit more um, liquidy and also tends to be sweet. So this is a savory dish or it's in between being sweet and savory? Is this particularly, you're going to have a little bit of sweetness to it, but it's definitely not sweet enough that you will call it a dessert. So I would say it's just right in between. It's definitely not a dessert um, product, but it's like I've been trying to explain to liken it onto something that you guys have because a lot of times it's difficult when you say to somebody, oh, I'm going to make bake. Bake is a process. Baking is a process. So people kind of look at me like, wait, what? What exactly is it? You know, so the best way for me to, to kind of put it over is to kind of Try to liken it onto something else. So that's the best way. Now, look. Now that the doughs all come together, this is what you need. You don't need to roll it until it's smooth. We're not making bread. We're not trying to make this smooth. So just until it comes together. And then we're going to take this and just let it rest on the side for at least half an hour. Just cover it and put it off to the side. So is that a process where it's going to rise? It's going to sort of double? It's not going to rise. Oh, okay. It's not going to rise. It's, it's definitely, it doesn't have enough leavening agent for it to rise, but it does lighten the dough. So we just need to let it rest for a little bit, and then we're going to move on to making the salt fish, come back to it. All right. Thank you. Rizzo. All right, if there are any questions, please raise your hand. Don't forget you can yell my name if I don't see you um, so we can get the questions in here and find out a little bit more about um, Chef Gian, of course, about the style of cooking as well as we get more into it. We're having bake and salt fish today. Even the, um, Chef, let's talk about so, salt fish. Any of these work? What? All right, go ahead. Salt fish, correct? Is yes. The, it basically sounds like you're salting fish and you're um, serving it. Can we get a background of what salt fish is? It's basically salted codfish. Um, it's basically, I know you guys have a version stockfish, which I believe is salted and dried. And we do use that sometimes, but we have, um, it's basically just cod that's been salted to help it preserve. So when you buy it initially, it doesn't need to be refrigerated. It has so much salt that it can last a long time. And that's basically how these th things like saltfish was invented. You know, back in the days when there's no refrigeration or you might be in a season where you're able to catch a lot of fish, you need a way to keep it, you know, for when there's no more fish or just, you know, when you need it instead of wasting the fish. So salt helps to preserve it. But the thing about it is that it's not edible with all of that salt. You have to remove it. It has to be removed. And there's two ways in which I do this. There's the easy way, which is basically overnight. Put it in a bowl, pour some water over it, and you just let it sit. And it's literally, for the most part, perfect. The perfect amount of salt is drawn out from the fish. And this is just room temperature water. You don't need to use hot water or anything. The next morning, it's usually drawn out from the fish. But what I always do when I cook salt fish, because it's so salty, if you don't remove the salt properly, it's gonna ruin the dish. It will be completely inedible. So I always test it. I take the thickest piece, and then I just pinch off a piece, and then I taste it to see how the salt is. What you're looking for is you need most of the salt to be removed, but you do need some salt content 
still in the fish. If you remove all the fish, all the salt, it'll be tasteless and it's just like a piece of husk. So this is not a dish that you want to have to add salt to. The salt, salt fish should have enough salt in it to be able to carry the entire dish. The next way we're going to do it, which is how I'm going to show you today, because a lot of times, you know, you're in your bed when you realize you didn't take all the fish. Who's getting up? I'm not going to get up. So when I get up in the morning, this is how I'm going to do it. So you're going to take the fish. We have a piece right here. And this comes with salt on the outside. So what you want to do is rinse the salt off. Whether you're soaking it or boil, boiling it, however you're preparing it, you're going to rinse the salt off before you soak it, before you boil it. So you're going to take the salt fish, rinse off the salt, place it in a pot and cover it with water. Bring it to a boil. Once you bring it to a boil, cook it for about 10 to 12 minutes. Then you're going to remove it from the heat and pour off that water. And you're going to repeat that process two to three times. Now, it depends. Some pieces of fish are very thin like this. You could boil it two times and it's enough salt that's been removed. Some pieces are thick like this, or even thicker. So you might have to do it two to three times in order to, you know, just taste as you go. Because as I said, this is an easy way to ruin this entire day. Nobody can eat salty food. So that's, the, that's how we're going to remove the salt. Please, um, is this, uh, this dish, is it uh, advisable to be given to uh, a dialectic patient? Because most of the time, the electric patient don't eat salt. So is there anything that they can substitute for the ingredients so that they can be given it to them should in case they want to test the, the dish? Substitute, say the question one more time, please. I mean, a dialectic patient, okay. this part, you know, this food has salt content in it. Okay. A dialectic patient doesn't eat salt. So in, the, in this case, and the person wants to eat this particular meal, is there, anything, is there anything that we can substitute the ingredient with, the salt with? I mean, typically for people who are on a low sodium diet, you're definitely not going to eat something that's called salted fish. I mean, for this, there's a version that we've made. You could use the same ingredients, but you can maybe use something like a tuna or something else, something that's not literally preserved in salt. Now, if you want to use fresh fish for whatever reason, you've got to make sure it's something firm and something that you can flake, and that's just not going to completely break apart in the fire with the lime. All right, so we see what you're doing with the salt, but I think some attention is also being diverted with the salt fish. It's being diverted to what um, the sous chef is doing with the dough as well. So now you put in, this is the, di the dried um, thyme, correct? Yeah. All right, so how much is it? How much quantity? We have a quantity conversation. I want to make sure um, people are able to replicate this at home. So the thyme is two sprigs, three, four, what it's, you like? I would say typically around 10 sprigs of thyme. And for this recipe, I usually use about a pound of salted cod. And the tomatoes, it's about a cup of tomatoes. You have one small onion. You don't need a whole lot of it. Pepper. You can add as much or as little. Sometimes I leave it out because, you know, if I'm cooking for somebody who is sensitive to heat, sensitive to pepper, I don't put it. What you can do as another way, which is how I typically cook it when I'm cooking for my children, is I slice it, I remove the seeds and the membrane. So you remove the heat from the pepper, but once you add it in, it's still going to have the flavor. So you're not going to miss out on having that, you know, that little peppery flavor that it adds. Next thing we're going to do is add the juice of a lime. So a small or one, half a medium lime. one, doesn't matter the taste or the size, it just depends on how much lime you well, like. This is a very small lime. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was surprised when I saw this because our limes are about this size. So for this, being that I am here, I'm going to say one lime because these are pretty small. So we're going to say the juice of one lime. And you don't want to add any seeds. Please keep your questions coming. Don't forget the hashtag is GT Bank Food Drink. And that's the hashtag on the social media accounts, whether it's Instagram, um, Facebook, it's Twitter. Please use that hashtag. Let them know where you are. All of this is happening courtesy of GT Bank. 
So, chef, after adding the lime, what's the next step? Because you said it's not so, such a very long process. No, with salt we're almost fish. done. We're pretty much almost done. Wow. Because once we add that, what do you want to do? Is add a little bit of black pepper. Personally, I like black pepper. For some reason, I like the flavor that it adds. That little bit of a heat. I mean, it's not too spicy, but it just adds something to it for me. So add a little bit of the black pepper. The scallions, these I typically add towards the end, maybe last minute or two, just to kind of heat it up a little bit, but not so much so that it cooks completely through. And you could leave a little bit at the end just to garnish it. Are we going to stir this around? And you know, I mentioned using this in a garnish. You know, when I'm, when, when I'm home, it's like the way I cook, being, based, being that I'm a blogger, has completely changed. Every time I get into the kitchen now, it's always from beginning to start. I think about the best way to present the dish, what is going to be the best result in the end. Don't get me wrong, taste still is the most important factor of a dish. It does not matter how great a dish looks. Once it doesn't taste good, you're not going to take another bite. All right, let me get this together. So we're going to add a little. So the reason you needed to have that hollow inside is so you can actually stuff it. Put the salt. There you go. Oh, nice. And you see this? There are not, there's another way you can do it. You can actually make the dough, roll it out, and stuff the middle with the salt fish, and then fry it. Ooh. You can also do that with corned beef, things like that. Just stuff it in and fry it. So you have this, and once you break into it, there's the filling in the middle. So that's another way to do it also. So next thing we do, can you do this one for me? All right, so the next looking. thing we do, you cut it open, and let me show you. This is not what we're looking for. Don't get me wrong, it still has a pocket in the middle, but for me it hasn't risen enough. That could be a result of also sometimes the oil is so hot, it doesn't rise as it should, and, it, and um, you know, just basting it kind of helps it to puff up a little bit more. Don't get me wrong, it still gets eaten with the rest. Nobody's throwing it out. It still tastes good, you know? Can we, can we serve it in half? Yes, here? we'll just cut this in half. And Ooh. Is okay, this let me help. I've yes. turned into a sous chef. But don't have me. Sous chef? Yes. <laughs> here we go. Well, I'm excited. Are you guys sitting side by side? You all finished with that? All right, we're wrapping things up with um, Chef Gian. Don't forget, of course, you can use all your hashtags, use also all your social media pages. The hashtag is GT Bank Food Drink. Uh, we're going to have our taste testers test us, let us know what they think about I think we can even have them share that because of... I'm not sure you want me to have such a very big knife in my hand. So we'll have you guys go ahead and share this. So just let us know what you think. Give the feedback. Wait, I cut it into four. It's like I didn't count myself. It's always nerve-wracking to see somebody tasting Taste your, your food. food. All right, please go it's ahead. It's always nerve-wracking. So Taste it. Let us know what you think. Hopefully, they love it. Chew. Swallow before you say, mm, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's ready to give me a first impression? Let me start here. What do you think? Very tasty. Would you like it a little bit more spicy? You know we're Nigerians. We want to kill ourselves. It's fantastic like this. Great. What do you think? It's a must try. I love every bit of it. It's really nice because I tasted the little bit of garlic and some spring onions. It's, it's spicy. I love it. So I'm very sure somebody's going to try this at home this weekend. So finally, what do you think? I think they make the blend is just balanced. Fantastic. Thank you guys very much. Thank you Please guys. Please a round of applause for Chef Jihan Pao Thank from you. Vienna. Um, you can, of course, check out her website, uh, jihancancook.com, and you will, of course, be able to take pictures with her. We're going to get ready for the next masterclass. Please, one more time, a round of applause for her. She was brought to you Thank by you. GT Bank.